Hi guys, Jonah here from the OptiZen app. In this video, I'm just going to walk through how I like to do internal linking between tag pages created with OptiZen and our collection pages. It's pretty simple. If you've done a little bit of SEO in the past, um, this will be nothing new to you, but you just need to ensure you kind of follow a strategy that's going to work for your particular store. This strategy will not work with every single store, but it's what we use and it works well across our user sites and our own sites. So here we are within the dashboard of OptiZen and we're on a particular tag page. You can see we've got our SEO title here on our tag page, our description, our SEO description and our page one, sorry, H1 page title. And this page is live and indexed. Generally what we like to do is a, is a very simple setup and I'm just going to bring over a notepad here and we create that correctly and we create siloed or collections with sub collections that are essentially linked together in a strategic way so let's say for example we have our main collection is jackets and then we have sub collections of red jackets blue jackets and green jackets all created with our OptiZen app so we can have these indexed in the search engines and ranking in search engines generally we like to link in this case, all four of these pages together and to each other. So from our main collection page, our jackets, we would link to our red, blue, and green sub collections. And then from our red sub collection, we would link back to our main collection and also link to our blue and green collection and so on. And that helps create that nice organized silo and tight structure for the search engines for crawlability, usability, and uh, how many search engines like to see structured URLs. So in this example here, we can see, uh, and this is uh, pads, uh, you can see we've linked to our white pads and navy pads and our red pads. And if we look at the live page, so we've got saddle pads black, because we have breadcrumbs set up within our collection page, or our tag page, we can see that it links back to the collection page. You could also link with an anchor within the content or the description back to the collection page. But in this case, we've just left it as and let the breadcrumb do the work. Then if we click on white pads and our page opens up, you can see that we link to our other colored pads and then it also links back to the collection page. Sometimes we won't link back to every single tag page. So for example, you can see we haven't linked back to the black tag page. It all depends on how aggressive you want to go with your anchor variations and your anchors. Uh, but if essentially within a silo they link, then that certainly helps the process. But also in this particular example, you can see that we have a filter on the side and if we go to color, actually, sorry, if we, if we go back to the, the main collection, so we need to be in a main collection. So here, as I mentioned, it's a good idea to link to the sub collections on the, from the main collection, which we have here. So you, you, you can see I haven't linked to the sub collections from the description and I haven't added any content, there's content here, but I haven't added any links uh, to the, the colors in the main description. What's actually happening is the filters are doing the work for the links. So if we scroll on down, we can see we have our black color filter here, and that's actually a link to the tag page. So if we click on that, that'll go to our black color page that I showed in the first instance. So by having that set up, we internally link between our tag pages and our collection pages um, in, with all particular colors. And we go back to a main collection page and you'll see that the same thing for the other colors. So any colors that we have indexed. So if white, for example, is, is also in here. It'll be down the bottom somewhere as well, down here somewhere. 
So that's how, it's very simple. That's how we like to link internally. We found this works really quite well, quite consistently. And it's, it's sort of a step that a lot of people will miss when they're actually creating these tag pages is actually tying in the sub collections with each other and then back to the collection pages and from the collection pages down through to your sub collections. You can also add in your sub collections in your menu as well. But because a lot of stores that use this app, app have about hundreds or thousands of different products and then they end up with lots of different tag pages, sometimes it's not viable to add the tag pages within the menu itself. So they let either the filter do the work or they use their content in their description, either at the top of the description or below the product grid to actually add their internal links. Keep in mind that the filter is not a, an absolute requirement, but it certainly does help not only from a user point of view, but it does help uh, to have that those links pointing to your tag pages to help the process. Okay, I hope all that makes sense. Any questions, please let me know.